Okay, interface types. Okay, everyone. So let's begin this session by discussing and showing and explaining how to configure those interfaces. So we want to connect the firewall onto our network. So we got a couple of options that we can choose from depending on your scenario. So we're going to take a look at doing layer two interfaces. We're going to take a look at doing layer three interfaces, tap interfaces, look back and tonal interfaces. And finally, when we're ready to do HA pairing, meaning that we're going to have two firewalls in a cluster setup, we're going to make some high availability interfaces as well. Okay, so let's get started with layer two and we'll go from there. Okay, a layer two scenario. So say, for example, you want to have the Palo Alto enforcing traffic, but you don't necessarily want to be a routed hub. You don't want the Palo Alto firewall to become a routed hub, meaning that in a layer three perspective, your users will need to hop into the Palo Alto in order to get to somewhere else on the network but you still want to enforce rules and traffic. You can do that by applying layer two interfaces. And the way that you do that is by configuring a specific set of VLANs that you want to allow communications to and from on that particular port. And for example, you have a switch that wants to talk on another switch on the same layer two VLAN, then you can put a Palo Alto in between and enforce the traffic and monitor the traffic and set some policies for it. So let's go ahead and configure a layer two interface. Okay, once logged in onto the Palo Alto, we want to click on network. We want to go to interfaces and inside the interface, we have our Ethernet interface tab. Let's go ahead and select one of the interfaces and let's take, for example, Ethernet 1 slash 1. Go ahead and uh, select this interface. Once we have the interface window option, then we're going to change our interface type to be a layer 2 interface. Go ahead and select layer 2. And now we can either assign that to a specific VLAN or we can just leave it as a layer two and then add sub interfaces with multiple VLANs. So in case you have a trunk that you're allowing to pass multiple VLANs, you don't necessarily need to allocate a specific interface for a specific VLAN. You can take advantage of configuring sub interfaces for it. So let's go ahead and do that example. I am going to also allocate it into a layer two security zone. Again, we need to create a security zone that is main purpose is just to add layer two interfaces. And that's very important. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you how to make a layer two security zone. Just basically click on new. Let's call it layer two. Click OK. And now we have a security zone, which is our layer two in this case. Let's do the same thing for a VLAN. Let's uh, configure a VLAN. And you can see I already got a couple of VLANs there. So let's configure VLAN 20. OK. So I'm going to click OK. Now we have VLAN 20 and it's on the security zone layer two. And we can enable LDP, but in this case, we're not gonna do so. Just for this purpose, I'm gonna show you how to tag a VLAN interface on that particular report. We'll click OK. And sure enough, once we commit the change, because obviously we need to commit the change so it becomes active, then this interface is particularly dedicated for VLAN 20. Okay, so if you want to have some interfaces, and this is what I suggest, you suggest take advantage of, of that trunk and configure a trunk and then create sub interfaces for each VLAN that you need to allow traffic for. So let's go ahead and make it a layer two without any VLANs assigned onto it. And then we'll make sub interfaces so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and click delete. And then once I delete, then I'm going to just configure it again as a layer two interface. Okay, let's go ahead and select layer two. And obviously the security zone will be on layer two, but we're not going to add any VLANs. We're just going to click OK. And now we're going to add a sub interface and you can see the sub interface option down below here. We'll click there. And this is where you can actually assign the specific layer two tag on that interface. So in this case, we're going to do 20. We'll go tag also 20 and then here we can actually assign it to the VLAN instance which is 20 and again a layer 2 you see now under this physical interface I have a logical sub interface doing dot one q trunking in this case I have a sub interface with dot 20 which is my VLAN tag so if you can see here I'm tagging VLAN 20 and I am actually assigned it to VLAN 20 so now I can even add a layer 3 interface inside this VLAN 20 VLAN instance so I can go here into the VLAN and then I can add a layer 3 interface for it so I can actually select my VLAN 20 and then I can assign an IP if I want to and also I can say 20 so make everything consistent and then we'll basically press OK and then I'll create that VLAN interface as well. So if you want to have a layer three address inside that layer two, you can also do that. 
but I would recommend having just a layer three mode and then create sub interfaces in layer three, which you can definitely do sub interfaces for VLANs in a layer three interface. And we'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so back where we are, we're actually checking dot 20 here. And now we're gonna do the same thing for 30 and 40. So we're just gonna select our main physical interface and we'll create another sub interface inside that physical one. We're gonna do 30, tag 30. And we're going to assign a new VLAN instance for this. In this case, let's call it VLAN 30. We'll press OK. And then again, add it to the same security zone layer 2. Well, with this, so if for some example you want VLAN and 20 and 30 to talk to each other without having some sort of policy in between, then yes, it's fine. But I would rather have this on separate zones. The reason why it, this is the purpose of doing this, you want to have one particular VLAN assigned to one particular zone. So for example, if 30 is the VLAN for wireless, it will make more sense to create wireless VLAN 30 as my zone name and assign that to this particular sub interface. So that way you're actually isolating inner VLAN traffic. You're not going to allow those two VLANs to communicate each other unless there's policy for it. We're going to press OK. And now we have 20 and 30. 20 belongs to the layer two security zone. That was our, our example. And again, you should definitely label this according to what you want, you know, the purpose of it. So we're gonna click on that, or we're gonna say wired VLAN 20. And by the way, we should change this to be a layer two. Okay, now we have a layer two. Now we should be able to select VLAN.20 sub interface, and let's just change that to our wire VLAN 20 security zone. Now we know that 20 belongs to the wire VLAN security zone and 30 belongs to the wireless VLAN. This is an example that you can use to implement layer two interfaces. So once you're done, you just commit and we should be good. Just plug in a port and you're gonna have trunk. Make sure that the trunk is allowing both VLANs. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go. Once you have that, you should be able to make those security policies and enforce traffic between those two VLANs. Layer three interfaces, I believe this will be the most common deployment. With layer three, you basically assign a, an IP address to that particular interface. Or you can also, like our previous demonstration with the layer two with sub interfaces, you can make it a layer three interface without any IP and then create sub interfaces for each particular VLAN that is passing on that trunk interface. And this is one of my favorite ways of going. So for example, you have a port channel and you have two firewalls. So you have one firewall that wants to span across two different switches. For redundancy purposes, you can build a layer three port channel and then create sub interfaces under that port channel. And once you have that, you can assign particular IP addresses depending on the type of networks that you're trying to communicate via the Palo Alto files. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, configure layer three and we'll do a layer three testing end to end and you'll see the results. Okay, when configuring a layer three interface, it's very simple. Go to network interfaces and we're gonna select an interface that we're gonna allocate an IP address and, and then we'll test connectivity to it. Let's take a look at one, two. So I have an, a switch connected to this particular interface and uh, we're gonna configure an IP address on this interface and then we're gonna connect to that switch and see if we can test and we can have IP reachability. So let's click on the interface. Once we click on the interface, we'll configure the IP. Select the interface type. In this case, we'll be a layer three. We're gonna assign this, cause now it's a layer three interface. We're gonna assign this to a particular RTR or virtual router. And we're gonna discuss virtual routing on another section, but every single layer three interface must be assigned to a specific virtual router so it can forward traffic to other interfaces. So that's how you have layer three connectivity between different networks. So let's create a virtual router just for this demonstration. So we're not actually using the default one. Okay, so once here, uh, we're just gonna call it router one and then we're gonna press okay. And now we have our router one. So we're gonna say that this is our inside interface. So we're gonna create a security zone or uh, by the way, we have one already. So we're just gonna add it into the inside security zone and this will be a layer three security zone because we saw that we can create different type of security zones. In this case, it has to be a layer three. Now we're gonna configure an IP address for it. We're just gonna click IPv4 or IPv6, depending on what type of network address space do you have on your environment. In this case, we're just gonna configure the most common one, which is IPv4. We'll click add and let's type a new IP address. So let's say it's 10.20.0.1 and let's make it a slash 24. 
Press OK. Advanced. We can add a management profile. So remember on our first videos, I cover management profile. In management profile, we can set this interface as our management interface by just allocating a management profile that includes SSH, HTTPS. But I just wanted to make sure that I can ping, I can reach the interface. So I'm just gonna select my management profile, which is ping. Okay, so we have everything, press OK. And now we have that layer three interface configure. And by the way, you can allocate address objects because now we know that we can have everything in address objects. So it's better for labeling purposes or naming purposes. So let's say this is our dev inside and then we can also type the IP address. And then this is a trash 24. It doesn't allow forward or backslash. It's, I'm just having a dash here. We're gonna type 10, 20, zero, one slash 24 and now because we have that then we can instead of typing the ip on the interface we can assign that address object as our interface address we're just going to select the interface okay we we'll are click ip before remember that i manually typed my ip here because i want to know what is that ip for i'm rather use the address object so let's just delete this we'll click add and sure enough, I have it here. Now, on my interface table, I can definitely see the name and the purpose of that particular interface. So now we have that. We have it assigned to a router. We'll press commit, and then we'll go on to my layer three switch, and we'll see if we can reach that interface. Once I have that interface configured, and I was able to see that it came online, which is showing my link state to be up, Let's go ahead and uh, test. I have one core switch here. And let's go ahead and uh, do a quick ping and see if uh, we got a response. So I have an interface in my core switch, which is 102002. And let's go ahead and do a quick ping and see if uh, we can reach the Palo Alto firewall. And sure enough, I get an ICMP response. So let's see if I take out the management profile out of the interface and the outcome of doing that. I'm gonna go back into ethernet one slash two. Once I'm there, I'm just going to remove the management profile of ping and we'll test again and see what will be the result. Take this out, none, okay, and then we'll press commit, commit, and sure enough, let's go ahead and uh, test once this is done. Yep, so I for sure am not able to ping because I just removed that management profile out of the interface. Okay, so with tunnel and loopback interfaces, we create tunnel interfaces so we can allocate a logical interface. If you have an IPsec tunnel, you're going to have a tunnel interface where you're going to either push traffic through and your virtual router, you're going to select that tunnel interface and say, hey, I know how to get to this network. It's via this interface. In this case, it will be pointing towards the tunnel interface. I can create a loopback interface that will have an IP. This will be always on. So if, for example, you want to monitor something or you want traffic to be redirected to a loopback interface or you have a router process ID that need to allocate to your specific routing process, this is the way to do it. You configure a loopback interface and then you add that loopback interface onto your dynamic routing process either is OSPF, BGP, etc. Let's go ahead and configure a tunnel and loopback interfaces. Okay, once on the Palo Alto, click on Network Interfaces and then click the tunnel and we're gonna make a tunnel interface. And imagine if we're partnering or we're peering with company A and then company A decided to build a tunnel between our company and them. So we're gonna build a tunnel interface. In this case, we're just gonna add a comment to my tunnel interface saying that it's company A. And then tunnel, we're gonna say because it's our first tunnel, we're gonna just add that one to it. Virtual router, we're going to assign it to our same router, so both my inside network and the tunnel network can communicate. Security zone, we're going to create a new zone, and then the name of this zone will be our company A tunnel. We'll press OK, and now this belongs to this security zone, so now I can have policies from my inside to this particular company A tunnel, so I can direct or enforce traffic between those two destinations. IPv4, so if you're doing an interface mode tunnel, then you configure an IP address here, but in this case, I am not gonna work on IPs or tunnel configs yet. That will be a separate session. Advanced same, if you wanna ass assign a management profile to ping something remotely through the tunnel, you can do so, but no, I'm just gonna make the interface. Okay, once I have the interface, I can then go onto the IPsec tunnel and go ahead and once I am creating the tunnel, I can select that tunnel interface that I already created for it. So we can 
right here we can already select tunnel one and then once we configure everything else this will be the allocated interface for this particular tunnel okay loop back interface loop back click on interface loop back we're gonna add one loop back interface In this case let's call it loop back one and this will be ospf router id and we're gonna say it belongs to our router one and no security zone because this is just a, a loopback interface for our routing process we're going to click on add and we're going to allocate an ip in this case i want the routing process to be 11.11.11.11 making something up it's a slash 32 because it's a single host and sure enough we want to make sure that it pings we'll press ok once i have that loopback interface i can go onto the virtual router select my router one you already see that I have a loopback one assigned to it. So now we can configure that. Okay, once here, then I can say router ID enable in OSPF and I can type 11, 11, 11, 11. So now if I want to know that I have reachability to my, my OSPF instance, router instance, which is this Palo Alto firewall, then by pinging 11.11.11.11, I will make sure that I have reachability, which in this case is an always on loopback interface in the Palo Alto firewall. Then we'll press OK and we should be good. OK, HA interfaces or high availability interfaces. When you need to build a two firewall cluster, in this case a highly available firewall cluster, you need to allocate some HA interfaces so you can build that synchronization between the two units. There's firewall models in the Palo Alto platform that they already come with a HA interface or multiple HA interface for this purpose. If you have a Palo Alto firewall model that doesn't come with that feature, you need to enable or change the personality of one of those interfaces to be an HA interface. And let's show you how this is done, okay? Back on our network interfaces section, click on Ethernet. And let's say we're going to make Ethernet 1 slash 3 HA interface. We'll click the interface and we'll change the interface type to be an HA interface. We'll press OK. And now it became an HA interface. So now we should be able to add this to our HA configuration or a high availability configuration. So we'll click device, high availability, and we can just click this setup here and we'll enable HA, we'll press OK, and in our control links, and those are your HA links, this is where we allocate a specific interface. So if your Palo Alto doesn't have already assigned HA interface, you can change personality by doing what we just did and then assign that as your HA interface. Select here and then we can assign Ethernet 3, which is your HA interface. If you don't make this an HA interface, you are not going to be able to see this popping as your options. You need to make it an HA and then you configure your HA uh, setting. Okay, and then finally, once you do everything, just press commit and you should be good. Okay, so we just finished our interface type section video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at V-Wires. Thank you for watching.